Here we go now, here we go, playing chess, fighting one another now to be the best. No, we shall not fight with our fists. Everyone sit down and do your best. I'm here at Amateur Team East. Last year I came here to work on openings, but it didn't really work out for me. So, today, I'm going to be working on the end games. Just end games. What is the name of the team that you are playing in this year? Uh, our team is called 50 Shahadis of Grey. You only lose once, YOLO. No empty chairs here. Adelik the Hunt. We're winners of the exchange. Obama no change variation. Call me Meg. Chess Castle Inc. Velocity Chess. Night Maneuvers. So many games. Should I advance the pawn? Should I checkmate with a queen? What about the rooks? I'm gonna go talk to some players outside about it. Last year, I spent a lot of time here getting familiar with openings. Um, and this year, we're going to be focusing on end games. Um, and I know nothing. I think every beginner should know the rock end games, like rocks to the seventh rank. That is a typical idea of the rocks. And uh, whenever you uh, have a rock pawn, you should know it's an easy draw. And you just have to match your king in front of the, the pawn, as simple as that. And the uh, pawn ending games are very important as well. If you want to study a book on endings, uh, the best things to do for practical play, I always, I always say practical play, and probably one of the best plays is Capablanca. There's a couple of books about his endings, get, get them and look at them. Of course, read endgame books, but you also have to like play it in real games. That's how I learned. I played a lot, a lot of endgames in real games. That's when you really like learn the concepts. If it didn't work out for you, you remember that it didn't work out for you. So. You don't want to make the same mistake twice. I'll just say take as much time as possible. Because especially for end games, like most people tend not to study them as much. So and it looks simple because there aren't that many pieces left, but one like quick mistake can end the game like easily. During an end game you want to minimize the amount of squares that your opponent can get to. The way I study end games is very mathematical. You know, I just study the simplest end games like, you know, rook and pawn versus rook, and then kind of uh, go backwards from there, add more complexity. My coach, Alexander Golden, always told me to study endgames from like a tactical perspective. Play the position out, get a good feel for the way you calculate endgames, more so than studying uh, the, you know, the theoretical stuff. Try not to go down material, that's number one. Uh, if you are going down material, you want to stick probably to a rook ending. What we do in life, that goes in eternity. That might signal, unleash hell. So I should basically just quit working on the openings and focus on the end game, and that'll kind of give me a better, um, more well-balanced... Not, not, not exactly. I don't think it's a good idea to just quit on your, end, um, your openings, but it's a good idea to focus more on your end game. Um, but you do have to work on the opening a little bit, but focus more on the end game. I think it totally makes sense, you know, instead of the Sicilian opening, you know, you have the uh, Sicilian end game. Just you finish it off early. You exactly, know? you might Get as well. <laughs> I can just, you know, stop working on the openings and just focus on end games, and yes. that way at least I'll finish well. Uh, well that's right. <laughs> it's a bad situation because uh, sometimes you work in your end games, you're a GM in the end games, and you never get to go to end games because your opening sucks. <laughs> After a full day of costumes, openings, and end games, I'm completely confused. I think I'm just going to go to my middle game, work on that.